Greetings, ladies and gentle players. It's another wonderful Friday this August of 2021, and that would normally make it a wonderful day for basics. Today, however, I've got something a little bit different in mind. As many of you know, I had the good fortune of ranking up to 8 Don this month, but sadly, we fell out of 8 Don. Not only did we fall out of 8 Don and fall down to 7 Don, but then I crashed straight through 7 Don and face planted at 6 Don. It was fantastic. Now, not to worry, I have since risen my account back to 7, and I hope to get back to 8 eventually. But that does raise the question, where do I go from here? It's kind of an important question. An important question that probably deserves a relatively serious answer. And for that serious answer, I brought on a professional. Now, you can see him in the upper right corner of your screen. I'm sure he needs absolutely no introduction unless uh, by some unfortunate circumstance you have just woken up out of a coma, in which case, don't check the news. But for <laughs> those unfortunate individuals, why don't you go ahead and introduce and tell everyone who you are. Okay, hi, I'm Michael Redmond, professional Go player. Um, and today I'm going to watch and do I call you Dwyran, or is there something else? You can I call me Dwyran or Josh. It's fine. I don't care which one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to watch, look at some of your games. Um, really exciting. Is I was actually uh, pretty impressed. Okay. Uh, um, start by asking me some questions. Where did where did you study to to um, get to that level? Uh, so I'm mostly self taught. I have I haven't really had a large amount of disposable income over the years, so it was very tough taking lessons or whatever. I have had uh, one or two lessons from uh, Feng Yun, that was enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And back when I was five Q, I got gifted uh, one or two lessons from uh, Yulun Yang. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, yeah, mostly just uh, playing, and more importantly, something that I've done ever since I was a ten Q is I always felt it was important to go over pro games to kind of get a sense of mm -hmm. direction of play and things like that. Mm. Yeah, I think that worked. Yeah, I, I think you have a great feel for the game, just to start with some of your strong points. Okay, that's so, great. So we just dive into the games. So you have black here. Mm -hmm. And, okay, let's see. It looks like your opponent is a seven done. Yes. And if it's a Japanese name, I guess it's something like Yoshio, but it could be a Chinese name, in which case I can't pronounce it. Okay, this game, um, actually, yeah, I sort of remember it. Yeah. Um, and, okay, it's perfectly okay, of course, to play like you did in the game, like here. Mm -hmm. um, are you aware that the, the AIs will give you a good score if you, if you play the target? Yeah, I've just never really been all that comfortable with it because they're going to get influence on the outside, correct? From Something here, like it kind of feels like um, uh, I don't like all of my stones. Generally, my games seem to like kind of feel like they're all on one side of the board. And mm -hmm. here, um, especially as an amateur player, like if something goes wrong where the majority of my territory is, it's hard to like fall back to a backup plan. So I, I generally um, don't like being all on one side, in this case, the top side, for example. I can understand that. Yeah, I, I was just um, interested in that this this was something that Gosegan was suggesting, mm -hmm. um, one of the greatest players of the 20th century. And he was, um, everyone, a lot of players didn't like it, but um, he insisted that this was good for black. And for your viewers, I, I wanted to point out that the, the empty triangle shapes here, um, while this is a big thing, that empty triangles are supposed to be bad, Mm -hmm. It's not actually an empty triangle because because black has captured a white stone here. Right. So instead of being an empty triangle shape, it's actually just the, the extra stone that black's getting. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a good shape. So yeah, um, I sort of like this, but I can understand how you would not want to be building on the, just the one side of the board. And it is sort of... Uh, by the way, what are the time controls on these games? Um, time controls... Uh differ between either 10 minute main time with 30 second Biyomi or uh, five minute main time with 30 second Biyomi. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so you have to be careful with the time. Mm -hmm. I think in, on the whole, you you have good instincts about where it's big and what the basic shapes are and stuff like that. 
mm -hmm. probably have an advantage over the players you're playing in um, in these games that I'm looking at. Yeah, I've so I think that. You, can, you can sort of trust that. Mm -hmm. And um, you probably need to save your time for later in the game where you have to calculate. Yeah, yeah. When fighting starts breaking out, and you have a lot of things to yeah. start considering. So again, this is uh, perfectly okay. This is a move that I would have played um, until recently, when when everyone is playing the, the attachment here. The attachment, yeah. So the attachment in the corner, uh, and this is also this is probably a more um, territory oriented, a quicker way to play. I, I think maybe now I would play this, but um, before AIs, I, I would be perfectly happy to play this move. Um, I think it's more important that you have a feeling you want to play here. So I think that's okay for you. In right. fact, it worked for me, so, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, no problems up to this point. Yeah, I guess that's okay. And there, yeah, well, that's, that's okay. Um, here, this move, it looks a bit strange to me, this move your opponent played. Mm -hmm. And I think this is an opportunity for you. So did you have any reservations about this move that you played? Um, so my initial response is I want to play a small knight here off of my d9 stone, but I'm a little concerned that if mm -hmm. they get to attach, they might get a chance to make uh, a, the beginnings of a live group fairly easily, or if they get a chance to attach at uh, c9, rather. Oh, c9, okay. But I don't think I can cut that on the inside. I'm going to have to cut that, yeah, on the out. And then it feels like they're getting the beginnings of a shape here. Yeah, yeah, but this would be sort of painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just if you continue surrounding the moyo. I think this would be okay for black. Okay. Um, My thought was to just keep them unsettled as long as possible to see right. if I could build off the top. But I guess this would do it too. Yeah. Actually, the, the variation um, I think is maybe best is this one. I think the point I'm trying to make is that this area, even the way you played it, it was sort of weak underneath. So it's not really, as far as territory is concerned, it's not so important. Mm -hmm. It's probably more important to be building on the on the upper side like this, mm -hmm. where you where that's the that's the area one that I, is sort of wide open. Right, right. Excuse me. One I had not considered. Mm. That that was off my radar. Yeah, but yeah, the idea yeah. was try to keep them unsettled to grow the top, but then the question becomes, mm -hmm. then why don't I just grow the top to begin with? That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. more directly. Mm -hmm. Because I I really think this was an opportunity. Uh, I think White had to try to find a way to sort of slide into the top. So um, I would be thinking along the lines of moves like this, or mm -hmm. maybe further towards the top, um, somewhere around, uh, around here, maybe. My first right. impulse would be to play here. And I, I, with white, I would be trying to reduce the upper side and maybe even trying to cut off this stone here. Mm -hmm. um, these would be the ideas I had with white. So I, I really think that this move that white played in the game, it was premature. There's a lot and of that going it, on, and the amateur level especially. Yeah. yeah, well... Because, sorry? Yes, yes, go ahead. Because um, what we're seeing a lot right now with the... Uh, I, I kind of want to say almost misunderstood way that the AI is being presented. Everyone mm -hmm. is like really, really quick to get into the corner as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So even if it costs like a lot of influence in exchange, we're seeing a lot of things like this where they're kind of missing the, the broad do, point huh? of the game, which is to like to reduce here rather than mm -hmm. to just hop into the corner and see if they can get in quick mm -hmm. life. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. So this is one of the cases where I think that Basically, your sort of um, intu intuition is probably better than the people you're up against here. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, yeah, that's something that you should just rely on in, um, in the early stages. You're generally doing better. This was an interesting little trade. It's probably okay for Black. Yeah, I actually I have you... ended through with Katago here. And this mm. is where it was sort of confusing for me. Mm. What were you about to say? I uh, said, so yeah, here I wasn't sure if I should be still thinking about building left-hand side or mm -hmm. if I should be saving the one stone. I was a little bit on the fence on which one. Uh, right. Well, that seems to be exactly the point that Kata was making. And it was showing variations. Actually, I didn't put the variations in, but it was showing moves like this. 
Mm -hmm. where black sacrifices the right side and it's going to build something like this towards yeah. the left yeah that i'd considered but there is always mm -hmm. that initial fear that i mentioned earlier of like right. putting all my territory in one spot because then i like sacrifice exactly this the and same. then they get yeah. in a reduction yeah. on the yeah. left yeah i yeah so i sort of figured that this would be a game where objectively it's probably good for black but um i i sort of understand that you would feel uneasy about the fact that blacks all the eggs are in the one basket basically and mm -hmm. so it's that kind of thing yeah um so yeah i would feel a bit uneasy playing this way so i can understand that um just just noting that this was the giving getting the better score and sort of came as a surprise to me also okay this move really um heavy it seems strange to me Mm. Um, but I, I had trouble pinning it down actually. Um, so I would probably have played the knight's move, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not, I'm not sure how much better or not this is actually. It's, it's just my feeling that I'd rather play the knight's move. Okay. So it's probably not a big deal. Mm. And here, I think you're okay. Um, the computer was wanting you to play a, a capping move here. Um, but it's going to get a bit, it's going to get pretty tactical there. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a, you're not very well connected. So white's going to be counterattacking. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with this sequence here. Oh uh, yeah. But uh, really, I think the, this point on the fourth line, it's pretty clear that this is a key point. Okay. Yeah. This, this would have made, um, put a lot more pressure on white. Mm. And even here you could, you could play it, uh, maybe after the peak. If you played this, um, um, I think it's going to be forcing, actually, is it not? Yeah. It looks like it could be, oh, well, maybe not going to die. It's going to be fairly painful, even if you just push through and play here. This mm -hmm. is going to be fairly painful. Right. Hmm. And you have no lack of eyes. Um, so yeah, so your group is strong. It's probably better to, seven is a huge move. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons you lost in then was that you failed to take seven. It was a key point. Um, yeah, I, did. I didn't notice that that was going to be uh, the Sente, yeah, yeah. OK, so yeah, up to this point, actually, yeah, white did a fairly good job, but this move was sort of shocking. And I think this was a point where you had to, this is kind of a, a key point in the game, I think, where white has been really greedy with this move. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, it would, it would seem reasonable for white to be playing even on this side. Right. And then you would peep, of course. Yeah. And I think black black has a good game going here, even if you just play something relatively solid, um, like something like this, for instance. I guess this would be a solid move. Or uh yeah, some some kind of defensive move there would be good enough. Mm -hmm. But when, when white plays here, I think you have to punish white here. So yeah, the, the move that you played in this game, apart from this move, the, the move that I sort of want to find fault with is, is this move where you played away mm -hmm. and you gave white uh white got this opportunity to sort of fix that whole central area without playing any painful moves at all right the and idea this there, is where the game yeah, yeah. my main concern there was that since my kind of uh left middle group isn't it to me at least didn't look like it was uh going to be fine as is and since i think mm -hmm. if i didn't try to connect my opponent could like lean on the bottom group to attack either or that if mm -hmm. I fix my weakness then he's probably going to fix his weakness and then we could just continue from there. I wasn't sure if I could attack him and leave mm -hmm. the those two groups uh, and on the bottom as they are. That was my concern. Okay, yeah. So this is the move that I have in mind here. Mm -hmm. And for the time being, you're you're about to capture this group if white leaves it. And that that's probably that's probably going to be bigger even than losing this group in the end. So mm. 
for the time being, you have a kind of a double attack going on here. Right. And the only group you have to worry about is this one. So um, this group can fight with white's group in, uh, on this side, white's group in center. And if white goes after a group on the lower side, you're going to be attacking white's center group pretty severely while capturing the force tones on this side. So it's going to be, that's going to be pretty decisive. Okay. And if, if like white can capture the cutting stone, but it's going to be really painful. So for instance, if white does something like this, you can just play on this. This would be so painful for white. And then, then mm -hmm. you could play, then you could play a defensive move. You could um, do whatever you want. Uh, you right, could right. play here. You, what was the move you played in the game? You played, you played here. Yeah, you could do that. This would this would change the game into a win for black. Just this exchange here in the center. And this is the variation I I made out of it. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for white to capture the black group, and unless provided black is willing to give up the one stone. So eventually white's going to have to go after that one stone. It's just not working. Yeah. In this case, it's kind of a, a two ladders that black has. There. So there's there's a ladder on this side. And a ladder on the other side. So yeah, this would work. Okay. There's probably there was probably more than one way to make that work. But yeah. All right. This would have been, been pretty decisive. I think you you have to punish the, this move, which was really greedy. So mm -hmm. for instance, if white has anything against you on the lower side that works, like something like this might be a uh, candidate move. Mm -hmm. It's going to work a lot better right now than it would after after this exchange. Like after this, it's sort of too late for white to be doing that. It's just right. the center is so heated up. So if white was going to succeed succeed with that, it, it had to be at this point, um, some some move like this. Uh, I could see myself playing this move with white and, and trying to make an attack there. At this point, it's not a big deal. If black cuts here, um, sometimes white can connect. Sometimes white will just leave it and continue attacking in the center. So th this would be something that conceivably could work for white. Mm -hmm. But after this, I don't think you, it doesn't seem natural that White would be able committed. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think this is a big chance. It's, it's, a, it's looking at the four games that, um, of yours that I, I looked into. This seems to be something missing from your game. This, this kind of um, decisive aggressiveness in, in, in the final stages when the, when the game is sort of in the balance. Mm. Yes, I have heard that before. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So this this is really efficient but for there's... White when White has played this greedy move and it, it actually works out as a boundary for mm. central ter territory. Right. Yeah. But actually the game is pretty close at this point. And yeah, yeah. I'm notoriously here. horrible at endgame. Right. So here there's two two key points that showed up. Um, to be frank with Katago, <laughs> I actually used Katago to research this. Mm -hmm. And one of the one of them was um instead of that move, it was this move. And this was sort of spelled out in the game. This this move exchanging with this stone is gonna slow white down. Yes. So yeah. the, now the next white move is um the next white move locally is to play here. It's mm -hmm. it's not quite as effective against black. In this case, um, in this case, you wouldn't be losing so much on the lower side. Um, if white did this, you would be able to capture it this way. Mm -hmm. And you can see that um, in the game when white has stone here, that it's a different story. But yeah. uh, when it's like this, it's not not so bad. And white would not be uh, white would be getting something, I guess. White would still be getting something here. So you would probably want to answer it anyway. But of course, in this position, the upper side, white's group on the upper side is in trouble. Mm -hmm. So it's not as immediate in that way also. So yes, just starting with this move and then crawling here, yeah. So this is big too, it's, yeah. So this is the variation, yeah, I was doing. It's sort of painful for white, like the way white, it's painful for white to find a good way to live because white's not alive if white plays here. Mm -hmm. And uh, if white plays here, there was this neat forcing move. Oh. In which you're threatening to kill the whole whole group. So, so that's working really well. Okay. Yeah. 
and yeah, th this is a collapse for white. So white probably has to answer three in, on the upper side. Mm -hmm. And it's probably really big for you just to finish off these two stones. I see. The move you played in the game on the upper side, it wasn't actually very big. Um, you played here and you played here. Uh, let's see, cut once. This move wasn't actually such a big move. Mm -hmm. That's because you were so solid in the corner. I, I'm not sure how many points that move was worth, but it was probably bigger um, to, to pull back, to pull back here maybe. Yeah, um, I just completely missed well, the bottom. Yeah. I thought the just because you're in trouble on the bottom, yeah. But it, this is this is was a pretty big move anyway. Mm. But yeah, this, this collapse. I think this is sort of the sign of what you're what you have to focus on here is the calculation mm. because this was sort of abrupt and it, it seems to be a a pattern in the games that you lost the, of the four games you showed me. It's basically that these people that you're playing against, the, the opponents you're finding, I guess they're mostly seven down ranked. Um, yeah, I've only been eight down ranked, so I don't have a lot of history with them yet. Their their feeling for the game is not is not as good as you, but they they're beating you in the calculation. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's, and it's, yeah, that, that sounds accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's something that if you sort of work on it. Um, you should be able to catch up. For instance, in games like this, you could play around with the local positions, um, start making life and death problems out of them and stuff like that. Mm. And that would be one way where you might be sort of motivated to to study the life and death part of it. Okay. Um, shall we move on to the next game then? Sure. So hold on. Okay. This game is, let me double check this rank. This. Oh. Okay, the record you gave me says that he's a seven. Seven, okay. Yeah. Okay, this is a Joseki that was pretty popular. Mm -hmm. um, do you know that it's... Um, I think it was computers that we originally found that, and I checked it with Kotaro this time also. Mm -hmm. It's not important to... To save the corner here. It's actually going to be a co at the most. So blacks actually should um, be taking control of the left side, or at least um, starting to. The left side is pretty big. It's going to be a big area that's controlled by white. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of the pattern that you had in this game where white was controlling the left side. Yeah. And the corner, it's, it's going to be a co. So like if white plays here and here, then it's this kind of thing. This this would be a call like this. Mm -hmm. And you could play away again. Or you could um actually I think yeah. Or locally if you play here, it's a direct call. Excuse me? Yeah, that I wasn't familiar with. Yeah. If white pushes through, if white pushes through, it's actually probably alive. Um this is actually alive if you play here. Um, nice. Oh, sorry, that was a misclick. Um, it's just too many codes attached to the thing, so there's no way for white to. And this would be, uh, you would be able to to squish it. Yeah. Talk okay. a lot. Um, and even the variations where you die. So like if you take the one stone here, and white plays like this, you're dead in the corner. Right. And then Kataro was just playing here and, and saying that this was good for black too. In this case, you're going to be sort of trashing the lower side and giving up the, the whole corner. I see. So this is this is the kind of variation that's sort of hard for me to understand completely. Um, but according to the AI, it's okay even if you die in the corner. All right. And it's not going to be worse than a call. So you, you should take the big point. It's sort of typical of modern Go with AI research that people feel comfortable um, just leaving a group if it's going to be a co or something. If it's a small group, it's going to be a co. And it's just too many moves for white to, to finish it off. Right. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. That's something that the computer was saying, and I completely agree with it. Yeah. OK. This was not really working for you. 
um, just because uh, white ended up being pretty strong on both sides. Mm -hmm. And oh, you, you just got the three stones, but like it was you were making this weak group and saving it then because you got the three stones. Yeah. But your group in the corner was alive already. So it's sort of uh, sort of slow. The, you're taking a lot of moves to, to accomplish that. Right. And so the idea I have that could make it work would be to cut here first and try to get that through. Like this would be sort of forcing. It would be a big honey at this point. Um, if white played here, you would have a big honey here. Yeah. So, so something like this um, is conceivable. Okay. And it's going to be complicated, but it looks like it could work. So something like this would be putting a lot of pressure on white. And the move you did was maybe not so much pressure. So it's probably not so good, um, although it's not decisively bad either. Would it be safe to say the initial Hane itself was uh, slow and I should be playing somewhere else? Because... Uh, that's one thing that I do remember from this game. When I played K4, uh, like almost mm -hmm. after the minute I played it, I thought to myself, this is way too early to be playing a move like this right now. And I should probably be approaching the corner or doing something else, like anything else but this. Mm -hmm. uh, do you agree yeah, with I that? Only the only potential for it to work is something like I was showing you where you actually make an attack. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe White was a, a bit too adventurous with this move, and I, I would have probably played here. In which case, Black is not really accomplishing a lot. Yeah. So then do you agree that uh, it'd be better to play a move elsewhere oh. other than K4? I would have played the Kakari at C14 immediately, yes. Okay. Yeah. But you know, if the whole thing ends up with, with you ending in Sente, mm -hmm. it's it's probably not a decisive loss there. Like, if in the game, um, Black is sort of wasting... Black lost some territory in the lower right corner. Mm -hmm. So you lost a little bit, but it, you kept it. You got to the big point at C14. This is such an important point. I think it's pretty important that you got to there. Yeah. So that's why I would have played there to start with. Right. Yeah. So white plays here. A natural looking move. Um, but actually, in a position like this where everything is settled, it's probably more important to actually make the territory. So I would be thinking of this move or this move, depending on how confident I felt about the fight inside White's area there. Mm -hmm. I think this should work. But like if I was afraid of something I saw inside there, maybe I'd play uh, one line back. And in the game, yeah, this was perfect. This was the perfect timing. Mm -hmm. And this is working fairly well for me. Yeah. So so um what were you thinking when you played this move? Um I wasn't sure how much Aji is here. The mm -hmm. what is it? F9 stone uh mm -hmm. seems interesting, but it seems that he's in more trouble than I am right now because the minute he peeped me, I don't think he actually wants to cut me for mm -hmm. uh well, for quite some time because right. I have forcing moves in the area. So I thought I would just go see what I can get in the area before I go mm -hmm. back and play a table shape and fix myself if I have to. But I figured right. if I'm just running away, I'm not losing anything by just playing mm -hmm. the forcing moves first. Yeah, I think you actually lost something in this forcing exchange because you're you're giving white two eyes. White has an eye here mm -hmm. and an eye here. So if we look at the original position, if you had just played, um, let's see, go back here. If you had just played here, for instance, and um, yeah, if you play something like this next, um, white's going to have to scramble for eyes. And actually, you're going to have some eyes towards the side. So like if, if something like this happens, you're pretty much alive. Mm -hmm. Or if you, play, if, you, if you play something like this, he only has one eye so far. So white would have to actually make the second eye. Mm -hmm. And it, um, like in this variation, it's just a one point, one point move making the eye at eight. Right. It's really painful for white. So I think you should have allowed, uh, you, you shouldn't, this exchange, it didn't really accomplish anything for you, mm -hmm. unless you're going to actively use it. So like if you do something like this, maybe, um, this would make more sense to me. 
if you did something like this to to make use of these two stones you have here. Yeah. This line, this, this actually is a kind of a shape that you could have done. And it would have been more active towards the center. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Okay, so far it's probably pretty close. It's probably fairly close. I think this was maybe an overplay on your part. Yeah, my and this is where it gets sort of got, gets exciting. Yeah, so you you sort of went crazy here, mm -hmm. um, but you sort of have to. Yeah, so your yeah, opponent I, probably should have yeah. disconnected. I had missed one when I began uh, sacrificing the top. I thought I could definitely get a clean disconnect on H13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the middle should do something for me. It mm -hmm. very much surprised me. And one of the reasons why I set this game in is because I did get what I wanted here. And mm -hmm. I do get a, uh, I think I remember getting a clean disconnect on the group. And then it just does mm -hmm. absolutely nothing for me, which was very surprising mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Well, you had some good chances throughout the game here. Mm -hmm. uh, once you cut here, actually, I think it should be good for you. In the game, you did get the cut here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I definitely feel like I missed something here because I feel like I'm the one in trouble still. And that was surprising to me. Yeah, but you're not. You're like, um, you could be, well, yeah, this is okay. Uh, the computer was showing me this move. It's actually no problem for you on the left there because you're live. Mm -hmm. And and uh, let's see. Um, if white plays here, you can peep, or you you could even bump against it. You have no no trouble making two eyes. Mm. So playing at one actually is more effective in attacking white in the center of the board. But I can understand this move. It's, it's a reasonable move. Mm -hmm. And maybe you would have been in trouble if White had played the diagonal move. Mm -hmm. There's something I just um, had a lot of trouble understanding here was your mis the mistake you made. Um, it doesn't really match the good moves you play sometimes. So you play here. This is good. And yeah, this worked. Uh, why don't you just capture the two stones um, by playing from underneath? Um, at this point, I was being very, very greedy and I wanted to cut through the middle and kill it. So I thought if I pro go from the top, then I could try to open up the cut at N7 or something. And I think just, yeah, that essentially was my initial idea. And I guess it doesn't work? I backed off from it because I don't think it does, because it seems that he... It doesn't seem to work. Yeah. yeah. But once I got to this stage, I realized, well, now I'm in trouble because the whole premise of my previous moves just went out the window. Right. This is actually, oh uh, yeah, White probably shouldn't play it for. It's pretty tricky, but it looks like it's going to be okay for White. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I, yeah, and then once that got realized, it's just complete collapse for me. Looks like White's going to win by one move. Mm -hmm. Ah, two moves. Okay, so it's, it's safe for White. Um, yeah, but if you had just captured the two stones, much easier. Like yeah. it, you might save them, but this is this is self defeating because now now you're going to get this. Yeah. Yeah. I so think this yeah. Was, uh, yeah. This was really. Um, after all this, this is not the place where I would sort of expect you to make a mistake. Oh, so, yeah. you have not seen enough of my games, there, sir. I right. have made some astounding mistakes. As an amateur, yeah, we excel at that. Thank you. We wear that with I pride. Think that sort of defines what you have to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like this would have probably won the game for you already. You you seem it depends at this I point. Admit, it depends on what happens to the corner here. There's some weird stuff that could be happening in that corner. I admit one interesting thing about like almost all of my games nowadays are played uh, either on recording or on stream, and I do admit. If I see something flashy that would be more entertaining, I'm more inclined to go down to that path. So yeah, here right. I think I just risked uh, just more than I needed to, just for mm -hmm. like viewers and entertainment and whatnot. Yeah, I think at this level you sometimes have to be 
uninterestingly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was just so painful. Mm -hmm. And yeah. True. And you true. Slightly better if you played the squeeze, maybe, but yeah. Um, if you played the squeeze here, why would take this is slightly better. Mm -hmm. But at this point, the game is probably bad for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, White had all sorts of moves in the upper right corner. Um, what was really, it was sort of illuminating for me when I researched with Kotago to see that these two points here are actually the key points in the corner rather than the 3-3 three, three point. Hmm. And it sort of depends... Um, it sort of depends which one white plays first. So if white plays here mm -hmm. and here, this is going to be a race to capture, which you'll probably win by one move or it's going to be a co or something. And mm -hmm. it's really annoying. Um, so this is one way white could have gone about it. And, and I was interested to see that these two moves, which like you would usually expect the 3-3 three, three point. Yeah. But I was really interested to see these moves lighted up by Kato. But yeah, this this was okay. White still has various potential here. Like White could play the Hane. Mm -hmm. And this this time it's gonna be closer. This this time it's gonna be less clear that Black's gonna win. I think Black's probably well, White could get a co out of it with this, but um it, this is gonna be an advantage for Black, but not as good as the game was. Otherwise, um, when white has extended here, it's definitely not the Han is, is not the move that white's supposed to play. White's supposed to play the knight's move here. And this looks like it's going to probably be a ko. For instance, if black plays here, it's going to be this ko. Mm -hmm. And that's a really serious ko for black. So I was really surprised to see White messing up here. I think he was just getting sloppy, thinking that he would he was going to win um, after what happened on the right side. Yeah, it could be time time control trouble, but this is obviously not working for White. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so White's actually surprisingly enough, White's still winning here. And this mistake that your opponent made it was. Pretty, pretty. Oh, yeah. Interesting to see you push through there before playing this when you could have played there. It would have been sent if you played here first. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Endgame, I will freely admit, is I'm I'm very bad at. I'm terrible yeah. at endgame. Yeah. But this actually prompted your opponent to play the losing move later. Yeah, I didn't really want to send this game in because of uh, how I quote-unquote win this game, but I was too interested in what happened in the middle for me mm -hmm. not to send it in. Right. Yeah, so this would have been a, a relatively close game, but a win for white. Mm -hmm. And then you got the Seki there. Yeah, we'll, we'll just have to show your viewers the Seki. Um, an interesting... Very lucky. It's a problem, basically, yeah. But th this gave Black a slight lead. Mm -hmm. So in this game, um, it was a pretty interesting game for me in that I got to check out um, some things with Kataro, like the fact I sort of knew that uh, Black was supposed to leave the corner here. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's actually pretty important. It's important to take the big points and just um, allow your opponent to play the co. Uh, should we move on to the next? Sure. All right, yeah, so this is one of the games that I actually liked when I was a Nate Don, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, calculation again. Hmm. Okay. Actually, you were doing really well in this game. Okay, playing the popular moves here. This is your opponent, though, so it's yes. okay. That's no problem. Yeah. I can never decide if I actually want to play the Hani there in D12, or if I just want to play right. Small Knight and just not bother with it. Or you could play away. Or a play, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could play away somewhere around here. Um, I think you'd be okay just playing something like this, if Black answers it. Because mm -hmm. he still doesn't have a base, if he takes one I've sent yeah. to again, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
But I think if Black Answer is like this, it's probably okay. So like, um, I was seeing Kadago suggesting completely different moves. So for instance, like, like I forget. But Black is probably supposed to play away mm -hmm. and then be doing something on the side like that would be something like this. But, you know, it depends on whether you like this kind of move or not, because this is the AI type of move, but some players just don't like to play it. So this is pretty good. Pushing here, sort of, uh, oh yeah, I did push one, yeah. yeah. Right. It was really interesting to see this move come up with Katawa. Um, I, I noticed that AIs, they tend to really like spaces like this, um, close to the middle of the board. So it, it goes straight to surrounding that territory. And it doesn't bother with the 3-3 three, three point. And this looks really effective to me, actually. It looks like it's a, a big move, which is going to control the lower side, as well yeah. as most of the left side. And it's oh, a move that would not occur to me. This is this sort of came as a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. uh, without the computer, I wouldn't be finding this move. But I really like it. So th I just wanted to show you that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. And this is just unreasonable. But it, it worked. Yeah, so that, I, thought it, I thought it was too. And that's, that uh, goes back to one of the reasons why I sent this game in. Because this cut, right. I felt, got a little bit too good of a result. Or I had yeah, a lot of yeah. trouble answering it. It's a surprisingly it. good result that Black got out of this cut. And it was mm -hmm. it's a terrible move. OK, first of all, um, I don't know why you did not extend. Maybe Black's going to play here. I think I... this is better towards the center. Yeah. And in some cases, you can afford to lose those three stones. Mm -hmm. But it sort of depends. Like, um, like for instance, uh, in this case, you wouldn't have the ladder anymore. But yeah. you would have a squeeze. And this, this would be good enough. You could probably continue with something something on the top like this. And you're getting a lot in the center of the board. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of an example of how you, you could afford to sacrifice three stones. Right. And it's pretty ugly for Black. Well, that they're clumped together. And Black's connecting up to a living living group here. So it's not all that efficient. Yeah, this would be great for White. Yeah, I, I just don't get this move. It's a bit, you don't really want to take that stone. No. I think I probably did it straight out of habit. Okay, this is good. And he cut when the ladder is good for you. This is a ladder, right? Mm -hmm. If black escapes, it's a ladder like this. So what happened? Like, um, what what happened with this move? What what were you thinking? I probably didn't recheck the ladder after he began playing cutting points. Right. Yeah. That that was really, um, yeah, an yeah, oversight. Sure. So, so you have to protect the ladder. Um, and this is going to be really bad for Black. Mm -hmm. It's just so easy for you. Your your group is already alive. Basically, if we assume. A move like this, it's already alive. Yeah. In order to kill it, Black would probably have to squeeze with something. This is going to be, it's pretty pointless for Black. It's like Black has terrible shape on the outside too. Right. And you can make eyes fairly easily. So even even in a position, uh, for instance, like like we could have Black even playing this move, and you'd still be alive with the squeeze here. So it's it's really very easy fight for you where you're going to be pushing this black group around and you're going to get a lot of territory all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, like everything you did here, although I, I don't like, I like this diagram better. Mm -hmm. um, but everything you're doing here, it's it's working. Provided you save the cutting stones. So, so you had to play this move. Yeah. And it was all spoiled by this move. This was... Uh, this is suddenly very bad for you. <laughs> yeah, Already very much bad. so. Yeah, it's a, it's terrible. In fact, this this mostly it was this variation that lost the game for you. It was, I think you had some chances later, but mostly it's already it's already gone. It's already bad. 
so your opponent was sort of inconsistent here. So, for instance, if Black was going to invade the right side, he might as well do it immediately. I think Black has a number of ways to try to win this game at this point. It's just so so bad that you allowed him to capture those two stones in the center. Mm -hmm. It's it's really bad for you, but he has a number of ways to do it. Once he's cut here, he probably has to extend once more and just take the profit on the upper side. Um, start moving in here. Just chiseling your, your territory down bit by bit would probably be enough to win the game for Black. So this whole team sequence for Black is sort of crazy, and it probably puts you back in the game. How are you feeling about the game at this point? Um, I was definitely annoyed that I missed out on what C16 was doing. Mm -hmm. And because he's not come up from the bottom side of O3 to reduce the center, I thought there was mm -hmm. a little bit of a chance here. Mm -hmm. This part over on the right, I wasn't like he connected up really, really solidly, and I didn't see a way to either get in the top or disconnect the right. Are you saying that you saw it or didn't see it? I didn't see it. I, I didn't no. see a way for that to happen. No, but it said, what, what if you just play here? The problem here is I wasn't sure if that Hanu was going to be good enough because he's going to connect solidly at S15, right? Mm, but you can break into the upper side. And that's the problem that I was uh, essentially going back to in the game. Like, if I do this one, mm -hmm. it feels like it's going to be Gote for me because mm -hmm. then he's going to come up from the bottom and I get a small reduction mm -hmm. in the top, but is that going to be enough? I wasn't sure. Mm. I think you want to, yeah, that, that's a good question, actually. Um, but you do want to establish it before he gets before he gets this stone, because um, if he gets it now, you're going to be able to squeeze him pretty badly. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably want to get this this exchange in first, and then choose a time to do this later. Because I see. in the game, after he cuts here, uh, later in the game, he got that in Sente. Yeah. And then he's not going to he's not going to answer you in the corner. I mean, he's 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 going to answer you in the corner. Right. And right. he's going to be alive on the side. Yeah. So maybe you could have just played the one extension there. It's slightly better. Hmm. But yeah, at this point, you're still sort of behind, but it's not as clear to me as it was before. And I think you have to be a bit more stubborn here in the corner. So oh. you backed out here. Mm -hmm. And this gave Black some more forcing moves. Uh, just that much more space in the center of the board. Mm -hmm. I think that's a significant difference. So you should just play here and here. And if Black tries to do anything in the corner, uh, Black's going to fall apart on the left side of the board. And it's not going to work. I think Black has to extend here anyway. And then you get the whole... This is a lot better because you mm -hmm. get the whole corner. It's a bigger corner. Yeah, very much. At this point, the game is still sort of hanging in the balance. I think that when Black gets these extra forcing moves, maybe a bit better for Black. This is a big point. And now it's sort of entering the end game. Oh, yeah. I think it's probably Black should be able to win by a small margin. And what happened in there? Something, there was some kind of a Oh, yeah, uh, the game actually ends because I misclicked, but... Oh, well, yeah, I misclicked, okay. Yeah. I think you were probably losing anyway, but... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was just that final move. Yeah. A bit sloppy the way your opponent um, played after you'd made your mistake. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you had a clear win if you had saved those cutting stones, if you'd just played played that move there. Okay. This one, yeah. Yeah, so like it, this seems to be um, the story of your games when you when you lose is that you make some kind of mistake like this, mm -hmm. which is um, it's right. sort of a reading mistake, a, a calculation mistake. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's you, like you um, you're doing really well in the openings and stuff where you don't really have to calculate. But I think you just have to make a kind of a mental switch um, where you you change to a kind of a calculating mode where, and you're thinking more about 
variations and, and reading it out. Okay, okay. so we that move on to the next game. Sure. Uh, yeah, this, this next game is actually the most exciting, maybe. That one, I actually forget which one it is. Okay, review this game. I'll give you the link. I was so in this time. game, um, you have white, and your opponent played the Kobayashi opening. Now, I do want to say immediately, I am I know that like the AI is not down with the two-space approach. I, I don't know. Right. It's mm -hmm. what I learned, and I, I just keep playing it. Is there like That's a simple variation in dealing with this? Because I know the traditional ones as the reasons why we didn't play like the high approach here back in the day. Um, if white plays the high approach now, what would you say is the most simplest variation uh, that players can expect if they're playing this versus the two-space approach nowadays? Or do you think they should well, still be playing the two-space approach? Uh, this is where the computer analysis um, is sort of hard to understand because the computer will probably tell you to play the attachment underneath it, E17 anyway. But uh, if you ask me, if, if I'm going to play here, I'm not going to play this opening at all. Yeah. Because it doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. um, so so I would still want to to play something like this or um, or something like this. And these are both moves that will not get a good score with the computer. Mm. So that's a kind of a problem with the Kobayashi opening, where it's already, it's, once black has played uh, D10, it's already supposed to be bad for black. Yeah. It's one of the things that I've found very strange. Like a lot of players are really uh, quick to take some of the new AI variations and whatnot. But one thing throughout all the years, even when professional players weren't really playing D10 anymore, you, you do still mm -hmm. see them like stubbornly still playing this one for uh, mm -hmm. various reasons or another. I guess it's just going to yeah. be around forever, the Kobayashi. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's an interesting idea of taking control of the side first. Mm -hmm. um, but with black, I would probably um, avoid this whole thing. I would probably just, um, I, I do sort of like the AI moves, um, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm going to avoid playing, for instance, this move I, in a position where I played high on the left side. So in order to avoid that, I would probably find a different move for black seven. Um, so so I would maybe be playing a big Shimari or something like that. Mm. Actually, I, I I always used to play this big Shimari. So I, this is a Shimari that I've been playing for um, decades at least. So so I, maybe I'd be playing this move instead. And this this is already supposed to be good for white. Um, actually, it was supposed to be good for white before AIs, I think, mm -hmm. when black plays the hunter here. Um, and I have a question for you. Um, when you played here, were you aware that this is not the Joseki move? Um, because I think after I played it, yes. But I see mm -hmm. the uh, Kobayashi um, kind of so rarely that I tend to forget all the variations and have to rethink them up on the fly. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just uh, do a kind of a short review of this Joseki for your viewers. Okay. Um, the most popular variation actually is to, to take the corner away from white. Mm -hmm. And if white moves out, then black will peep here on the second line and then play here. And there were all sorts of weird variations where black did not play on the left side and sort of invites white in here. And then is going to try to do something with the wedge there. So, so for instance, something like this. And this is actually pretty dangerous for white. So there's variations like this where white is probably going to avoid that by playing something on, on the outside. And eventually black plays on the left anyway, so it would be something like this. Um, so there's variations like this, or um, actually it's safer for white to take take this move and make two eyes. This is a variation that I played a lot. It's actually probably pretty even. I, I've had fairly good results. When I played the Kobayashi opening, um, quite often I would get into this kind of position. Usually when I see this played in amateur level, this is the variation that I see most often. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when black plays the Hane here, this is already a variation that was played, I think it was played early in the 20th century, um, before I went to Japan, maybe the second half of the 20th century. 
Um, there was a top game in Japan that was played like this. Mm -hmm. And Black played an Atari here. Mm -hmm. And they actually decided that this is good for white. Yeah, I've never white really gets understood. To black here. Yeah, I have seen this variation a couple of times. It always seemed better for white. Right. This stone here, it's just, um, it's still there on the board. It's still, there's a lot of nuisance value in that stone. And so white would be moving towards the upper right corner, maybe, and would eventually be able to force black to capture that stone at one. White has a nice territory in the corner. Black has a kind of a clumpy shape, and the left side is open underneath. So there's a lot of bad, um, a lot of reasons for this to be not so good for black. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would suggest you should have played by playing the honey here. Yeah. And this was the joke of the reason. Um, interestingly, in his study group, Gosegan was saying that black should pull back. This is arguably, it's, it's slightly better for black, but white's going to play here. This is probably still still good for white. Still that white stone at one is is still there on the board. It's, it's a lot of trouble for black to capture it. And the move that you played at 14, this move, mm -hmm. it's sort of a trick play. And I, I was sort of wondering if you were sort I was, of testing your point here. I was not <laughs> trying to play trick play, no. I just probably, okay. yeah, I, don't, I probably just messed up. Okay. So if black plays here, and you play here, you can capture the one stone. But this is actually going to be really bad for white. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, it's even worse if you try to connect on the first line. Oof. Because black's going to get that stone in the corner with Sente. And it has a really thick shape. So black could play away um, here or could even play the corner and closer. This is just mm -hmm. very bad for white on the whole. Right. And if white, and it's a huge difference if white plays underneath. So if black plays like this and you play as you did in the game, mm -hmm. um, then black has all this potential of playing an attachment here, an attachment here. A lot more are playing this move to kick here. All this potential black has in the corner, it's very, very much different. Mm -hmm. Right. And if white, um, okay, yeah. So if white cuts here, another important move is that the test of G for black is to play play the net here. And this is actually um, something that we researched when we when we researched this Josek. So it's actually it's not even um, it's not even new. This whole variation here, it's been around a long time. Hmm. And if white pushes through here, black gets to squeeze and then can play here. And, and in this variation, white's not going to get any kind of a squeeze in the center. White's going to have to push from behind. And this is going to be okay for black. White doesn't even get to break into the left side because this this would be this would be sort of suicidal. It would it would be too dangerous. Yeah, looks painful. Yeah. So this was um this was going to be really bad if Black had played here. But this move, it's terrible. This this changes it to a great degree. And that Black is filling his own liberty and is losing all of those moves like D17 or C18 or E18. All right. of the good sushi moves that Black had, they're all gone. And so this is probably bad for Black. But Black should still play the net. Black should still play the net. And this would keep Black's position from falling apart completely. Like, there's no question that this exchange is bad for Black, mm -hmm. but this would still be a passable result. So if White takes the two stones, obviously, uh, a lot better for Black. Or if White pushes through, obviously that exchange is a bad exchange for Black, um, but this is a lot better than the game. This is still a position where White cannot save that stone at 16. Yeah, and so it's it's going to be playable for Black. You you he'd just be kicking himself for playing this exchange. But yeah, once Black is stubborn and tries to save the two stones, th this is just um, it's already very good for White. So I thought that just the way you executed it, pretty much perfectly. I, I, it made me wonder if uh, it was. It wasn't kind of intentional, no. <laughs> No, that was not planned out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I, I can see that move. 
Um, actually, I think Kotaro was suggesting that White played here now um, with a kind of an aggressive idea. But so this is going to be really... is fine, or does it not matter if the stones die there? Um, well, yeah. Like, there's all sorts of weird stuff that was happening with Katago, and I, I'm not sure what the real answer to that question is. Oh, okay. So it sounds okay. if I'm... I'm not saying that I really disagree with your move. Mm -hmm. just showing you what Katago said. Oh, okay. And there was all, all sorts of very, very complicated variations in which Black is going to try to kill you on the left side of the board. Yeah, that's the hardest and... part of reviewing with an AI. It's just trying to right, like yeah. get to what's simple mm -hmm. through what's really complicated and going to get you killed. Right. So I, I would say, bottom line is I, I'm, I'm sort of with you when you when you don't want to get into this variation, and I can understand that kind of move. So it's okay, and and this is the testogy, and the result you're going to get here is it's not going to be bad for white. <clears throat> so it's on, on the whole, I sort of agree with what you're doing. This uh, this testogy with an attachment on the top of two stones, mm -hmm. that's the shape move. Um. I have a question of whether you should have played that exchange or maybe played here immediately. Mm. I would probably have played this immediately, and if Black plays the same move, you you have better shape in the center. Yeah. Or if Black plays here, you you could play it now, and it would be a, a move difference. Okay. Maybe better not to play it, but um, probably not a big deal. You have nice shape there in the center. Mm -hmm. Um. Probably better for Black to capture the two stones. Yeah, I but again, it's to go back and kill it off. Point. Yeah, this would be much more. You would have less less potential in the corner. Mm -hmm. This worked really well for you. And part of it was the fact that your opponent kept playing underneath you, and that sort of made it easy. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, um, for instance, this move. Um, Black had to, to attack a, a little bit more. Right. Even if you can make a life on the side, it's better to attack from this side. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really weird that he was attacking from his strongest group, which is, it's, it's not the theory. You're supposed to attack from your weak group. Mm -hmm. So this was really bad by Black. I think this and was... you're saving these stones, it does put pressure on Black in the center. So at this yeah, point, you're just part... completely weak. This part I wasn't sure of, because I had obvious choice to me it seems that uh rather than connecting up those cutting stones i could have just like jumped away one more time like a star point mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. let him deal with it uh right. is it too aggressive to connect that up right now or um, what, what do you think that's the kind of point where it really depends on your calculation and so for instance in the game sequence it worked really well it worked perfectly um but jumping here would be I think it's going to be good enough to win the game. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't think Black can really afford to to go back here and allow you to play another move on the right side. Right. So if Black tries to play something active, then you would always have the, the opportunity to go back here later and probably safer. Or, or you could even just ignore that and, and keep um, surrounding the right side. Right. So I would be thinking of this. I think the fact that your opponent kept playing underneath you made it work really well. So this would be a point where Black really has to try to find something on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, and it's probably dangerous for Black too, just because you have uh, you have pretty good shape here. I think in my, my gut feeling is that if we get into a kind of a race to capture here, um, White has some potential to win this race to capture. So if, if we're talking about something like um, this kind of thing, yeah, his bamboo joints just give him a lot of liberties. White has so many liberties on the outside. It's going to work for white. Huh. So yeah, maybe it's unreasonable for black, but so you, you have to go back to this move where black should have started it earlier. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe a bit late, but that would be the kind of move I would be worried about with white. And when black, um, although this is kind of a shape move, it um, you, you get away free. So... And up to this point, if we assume that this sequence is going to happen, this worked fairly well for White. Um, but actually, I, I sort of agree, agree with what you were saying before. It's probably better for White to just play here. It's, safe, it's safer. And 
I would want to play safely in this position where I think white has an advantage already. Okay. That so yeah, that, that is that is what I feel. All right. But it worked really well. This is like it's worked probably more than the position deserved for white. <laughs> I can agree with. Okay. So here at this stage of the game, um, taking this to a win at, at this point um, is something that you should be able to do, but in actual practice, it gets pretty difficult. So black has something like 40 points mm -hmm. and you probably have, um, you probably have as much territory and a control over the lower side, <clears throat> but you're still three points away from the corner here. So it's, this is your weak point, mm -hmm. uh, the three, three lines here. And so you played the, the shape move with the wedge here. It turns out that this was, Katawa didn't agree with this move. And um, after researching it, I agree with Katawa. I, I, I'm going to say that you should play on the, on the right side here. And the shape move doesn't matter. And you just ignore, oh, sorry. You ignore that and you secure the corner territory. And in this variation, like Black will jump out maybe, but um, you can, you have no problem living on in center. You have several points there. And in this case, I'm, I, it looks like white has something like 50 points. So um, so this is a late stage of the middle game where actually, if we look at the black group, um, it already has an eye here. Yeah. And it sort of has another eye um, either here or somewhere around here. And it, it's sort of ambiguous, but there's it's, it's pretty much alive already. And so you the shape move that has to do with that black group was not so important. Yeah, it's not going to make it even more alive. And maybe this was an opportunity. Uh, I didn't make a variation for that. This was an opportunity for Black to jump in here, maybe. And I think the variation I saw with Katawa was this one, where Black is, um, it was actually showing something like this. This Black group, it's, it's going to be tough for White to kill it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, actually, if white plays here, black can play here. And this is already a live shape. So black has black has some eyes there. This is probably the most important territory. It's the area where your your group here, it's not a, it's not, it's not settled yet. So yeah. you have to be really careful about this. So that's why this move was suggested as the correct way for white to play. And this is a case where I I I find the computer analysis is relatively easy to understand. I, I agree with yeah, it completely. Makes sense. So when your opponent answered you here and you got away with that, it's even, at this point the game is the game should be over. Mm -hmm. You probably thought it was over. Probably yes. It's, it's, it's and then he keeps trying. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is all bad stuff that Black sends. None of it is working. It's, yeah. It doesn't really matter where you play at this point. Um. This move was kind of a strange move. It's it's clearly better to cover here. Yeah, I thought he was working for working at something and maybe there was like a cut there that was going to work. So if I just didn't give it to him, it was going to be fine. And that's it's still fine. It's still fine. Yeah. And it's not as if it's working. And here, here you should just cut here. It's dead anyway. Mm -hmm. This was actually a pretty important mistake. If you had cut here, then he's already dead. There's nothing, nothing happening here. Right. This would have been a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's starting to uh, kind of a scent of bad Aussie here. But of course, you're completely okay on the side. So what what happened here? Were you in time trouble or something? I'm definitely down to 30 second period on me here. Yeah. So yeah, this is calculation once more. It's, it's actually a relatively easy shape, which you should not have been making a mistake at. Mm. So like there's inter this move is just it's just dead. And so that's really that's the worst possible result. Mm -hmm. Um, there's various moves that are sort of intermediate, like where Black will probably be able to save the group on the left, mm -hmm. but you're going to be alive anyway. But if you play here, 
there's I don't see any problem with white. It's already alive. Yeah, that is a very big mistake. Mm. Yep. It's just like um it's this one move you play in the games that you lose. You play one move like this. And that that um that throws the game away. Yeah, that that's definitely a really really bad habit that I have. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you get rid of this this kind of move, like if, if you avoid playing this move every time, mm -hmm. then it's going to make a big, a huge difference in your winning record. Okay. And that's it. Like it, it's dead. Yeah. So, so so immediately bad. Yeah, it's sort of a, a pity that just one move can do so much damage. That is the, definitely the weight of one move. Yep. And it's... Um, like I'm, I'm sure that it's like it's a thing that there's a difference between people's strengths and weaknesses. But when I look at it, the mistakes you're making seem to be relatively such simple, simple moves compared to the good moves you make, which are for the opponents you're playing. They're they're moves that are difficult to play. So I, I think you have an advantage in your feeling for the game in. Your instincts or your intuition, intuition. Mm -hmm. um, but then moves like this in a tactical position where the life or death of a group is on the line, they're very decisive. They 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 will finish the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just have to, and it's something that I think that you should be able to uh, avoid. It, it's something you should be able to fix. Well, I would definitely like to hold. Uh, eight done indefinitely, so I will be trying to fix that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just practice your life and death. Um, and like if you find doing problems and stuff a bit stale, you should just um, sort of uh, research around positions like this in your own games. Mm -hmm. Like you could make a, a half dozen life and death problems out of this local position alone and just playing with it. Uh, is another way, it, like if you find that to be more more exciting, you might mm -hmm. say. It, it just, you just have to find a way to do it that's not going to be stressful or boring for you. Something that you find entertaining. I'll uh, give doing the problems that come up in uh, my own games at first a try, because that, that probably yeah. would be more interesting to me, because it's a problem from like a live game that has definitely... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think on the whole, you can just trust your instinct and the opening and positional judgment. Most of the time, it's it's probably um, better than uh, most of those seven dons you're playing. Okay. So, so you can probably just trust it and save the time for positions like this, if okay. possible. Well, uh, thank you for your reviews. Hopefully, if uh, at some point in the future we do this again, I'll have nothing but eight don games for you to review at that point. Marking progress. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Best, thanks for reviews. Um, let's see, any quick shout outs, places where people can find uh, your videos, your work, what you're doing? Uh, you can go ahead oh, yeah. and thanks. mention those. Yeah, I completely forgot. So I have a YouTube channel. Um, I can put the link in the chat if you want. It, what, is that going to work? Um, no, I'll be having the links to anything that he gives me in the description down below this video. So you all, you guys can all, uh, check that out, uh, down there. Oh, great. So I'll, I'll, I'll just make sure you have it. Um, so I have a channel on YouTube mm -hmm. and I have a page on Patreon. And those are the two important links, I guess. I, I also have a Twitter account, but that's basically, I'm just talking about things that I'm doing on, on YouTube and stuff. Well, great. You guys can find all those links in the description down below. Uh, Michael Redman, thank you again for joining me today and giving me a heads up on my games. Appreciate it. It was really fun. Um, hope you all who are watching also enjoyed this. So yeah, thanks for joining me today. And okay. yep, I look forward to improving and hopefully bringing you nothing but a string of 8 down games next time. And yeah, I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.